Today is the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and, uh, and so what do you think we're going to talk about? Prayer, right? No, <laughs> think, we're going to talk about thankfulness. Uh, we're going to take some time to talk about gratitude and Thanksgiving, and, and, you know, and fall is just a wonderful season. It really is. It's too short in South Dakota, but it's a wonderful season. You know, there, there's harvest. Uh, it's different hunting seasons that go on. Maybe you've got fall calving or fall lambing. You take time to, to really prepare for those long winter months that we know are coming. And as you're preparing, maybe there's a little bit of hope in that, saying, you know, I know that winter is probably not going to be easy this year. It hardly ever is. But God, thank you for giving me what I have so that we can make it through this next season. Fall is a wonderful season, and it has one of my favorite fall festivities which is Thanksgiving. Now, it's not just because my birthday is near Thanksgiving. It's because Thanksgiving is just such a wonderful time. Now, the unfortunate thing is, is that Thanksgiving is kind of starting to be forgotten. More and more, we're seeing how Thanksgiving is just maybe, it used to be like a season, right? Like, Like fall was looking toward Thanksgiving because then you get to enter in to more of the Christmas season uh, maybe it's my inner Grinch coming out, which we're going to hear about more next week and through that sermon series. Um, maybe it's just my inner Grinch, but it seems like we have less room in our lives for Thanksgiving than maybe what we used to. Perhaps Thanksgiving has become a day where, you know, we get together, we eat some turkey, we watch a football game, we argue about a few things. Our kids get to have fun, but as adults, we get stressed out, maybe. And maybe that's just my personal experience. I don't know. Maybe all of your Thanksgivings are completely stress-free and you never have a problem, right? No, Thanksgiving can be such a wonderful time, but there's also things that can be hard about it. There can be things that are difficult. You know what? This year, after all that's gone on these past couple of years, we're finally going to have a Thanksgiving that maybe isn't that terrible. Maybe we finally get to gather together with people we haven't seen in a while. And then there's that one person that their entire identity is just wrapped up in arguing politics the entire time. You're like, oh, I wanted some peace this Thanksgiving, right? Like, it's okay to discuss these things, but there's so much more to life than arguing. There's so much more than just seeing the negative. I think sometimes we forget about giving thanks. So maybe we should stop, we should take time and not forget thanksgiving. You know, the retail world, it's pretty much forgotten thanksgiving. Stores have switched from Halloween candy straight to Christmas candy, from costumes to toys. And the only reason that thanksgiving has a space in our consumeristic culture is because the next day is Black Friday. And then you've got the weekend, But then there's Monday, which is Cyber Monday. So if you can't get to the store on time for Black Friday, you can always shop online because that's what Thanksgiving is really about, right? No, it's it's not about buying stuff. It's not about accumulating more. It's about taking time to say, God, look at all that I've been blessed with. I feel like the further that culture gets away from really that harvest mentality, being connected to the land, having a real connection to creation, that humanity becomes increasingly ungrateful and self-serving. Uh, there's a page on Facebook that uh, every once in a while when I get on there to do stuff for the church, it's usually one of the only things that really pops up for me, and it's about South Dakota historical places and people. And recently there was a picture of people in front of their home, and their home was, you could tell it was a wooden shack that had been built into a hillside, that then they had kind of cut a walkway through, and they had been begun preparing for winter. And there's two people with big smiles on their face, wrapped in clothes that we wouldn't consider warm nowadays, and they are full of joy. They have these huge smiles on their face when they're standing in front of something that we would now kind of consider just a shed on the back of our property. But that's their home. That was just a couple generations ago. And they look so incredibly thankful and nowadays we talk about Thanksgiving and we have to think about all the things we have to do and the, and the list that we have to check off and the things that come after and it becomes a season of stress. When really it should be a time where we say, man, look at all, all we are blessed with. And really I'm talking about more than just the day of Thanksgiving. 
I'm talking about a heart of thanksgiving. The day of thanksgiving, if you read through the Bible, you're not going to find a day where you celebrate thanksgiving. But it does have a Christian focus when we celebrate the day of thanksgiving because all throughout Scripture, we are called to give thanks, to be a people of thanksgiving, a day where we take stock of what we have, which should be every day where we reflect on all the blessings that God has given us. I think we should not forget, we should not, let me see, how am I trying to say this? Don't forget about Thanksgiving, right? Don't forget about it. We need it. We need to give thanks because as a Christian people, giving thanks should be at the center of who we are. Now, this idea of Thanksgiving, we can have so many different definitions out in the world. That Thanksgiving's a time for turkey, it's a time for football, it's the day before Black Friday. But when we look in Scripture, Thanksgiving is a feeling and expression of gratitude and thanks, which is the result of recognizing the greatness of God. It's the result of recognizing, God, look at what you have done. My kids and I, we were uh, singing some different songs this last week, and in one of the songs, um, it was saying, it was celebrating how, God, you loved me first. And my son Cyrus, he's like, oh, why do they say that? I don't like that. Because God loves everybody, right? And he doesn't, and he didn't just love me first. And like, it caught me off guard because I'm like, you're right. Why does that say that? Oh, yeah. Because in Scripture, it says that God loved us first before we ever loved him. When, when we recognize what God has done to reach out across the expanse, to reach through the sin that divides us and connect with us, it should create a spirit of giving thanks. We recognize just how great God is. All across Scripture, we find instruction to give thanks. One of my favorite passages about Thanksgiving is from Colossians 2. It says, Just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him. Right? It's not just a one and done thing. Right? It's not just, okay, yep, I believe. I was baptized. I've been confirmed. I'm good to go. I've got my fireproof insurance, and I'm good to go. It's not that. You continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, continually connected to the source of life. That's how we're to live our lives, strengthened in the faith that you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Which, by the way, you know why I advocate for people to help teach Sunday school and to get better connected to our kids and why every second and fourth Wednesday I've got 20 crazy teenagers in here that are trying to encourage in the faith it's because you are strengthened in the faith as you were taught. And if there's no one there to teach the next generation faith, how are they ever going to overflow with thankfulness? We need to have our lives rooted and built up in him, which means raising up those who come after us so they can be rooted and built in him, so that all of us can begin to overflow with thankfulness. In First Thessalonians, maybe you're familiar with this passage, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. All circumstances. I think when our eyes are attuned to what God is doing, it might be the hardest day of your life. There will still be cause to give thanks. It might not happen until after, after God has carried you through those deep waters, carried you through that fiery, fiery ordeal. It might be after, but you're still able to give thanks. And then another one that most people know, Psalm 107. Again, it's all across Scripture. We find this command to give thanks. This one was turned into a popular song. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. You guys know that song? Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Oh, I thought you'd pick it up. I thought I'd hear from the choir loft, his love endures forever. <laughs> so close. I think the choir sang this song once. It was wonderful. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. It's all across scripture, this encouragement to give thanks. But I'll be honest, I often forget to truly give thanks. Now in the morning I wake up, I thank God for the day. I thank God for the, my family. I, I pray for my church families. I pray for our community. 
I spend time connecting with the Lord, and, and part of that is saying thank you. But then I go throughout my day. I pray for different people. I do different things. I connect with other people. I get ready for the next Sunday because the next Sunday always comes too soon. And then at night, then I take stock and I remember to give thanks and I remember to pray to the Lord and connect with him again. But throughout the day, am I giving thanks? Throughout the day, I often forget to see the things I should be thankful for. There was this interesting little poem that I came across, and it was, it was a, this teaching on how to give thanks. And if somebody gave you a donut, would you be dissatisfied because there's a hole in the middle of it? You'd be happy you got a donut, right? And so that poem that goes with it is that uh, in life, make this your goal. Look at the donut, not the hole. During the day, whatever that day is, whatever, whatever comes your way, are you going to focus on the whole, on the, on the few things that are missing, on the thing that you wish you had, on, well, it, maybe it just doesn't feel quite as complete? Or are you going to be thankful for all that you do have? Have you ever had maybe a close call? Something bad almost happened, but you were saved from it. Has that ever happened to any of you? Maybe you're working cattle, and, uh, and you're just with that one mama cow that doesn't like anybody, and you think everything's going to be fine this time, and she makes a kick, and it, it blows right past you and doesn't hit you, you feel pretty thankful, right? You pre feel pretty thankful. Two winters ago, I think it was two winters ago, maybe, um, my family and I were driving on the interstate, and there was a spot on the interstate where the snow and wind were blowing in a way, and it was just that kind of right kind of temperature that the road was just warm enough that the snow coming across was melting. And but the wind was freezing it at the same time. So as we're driving, we see this blowing snow, and we hit a patch of black ice. And the pickup that I had at the time, there wasn't a four-wheel drive option. It was only a rear-wheel drive. And we hit that, back, that patch of ice, and the rear end just shot in front of us. And so we're spinning on the interstate. We go into the ditch in the center ditch, and it's a very deep one, but thankfully it's filled with snow. And so instead of going into the ditch and rolling, which would have normally happened, is that snow brought us to a slow and complete stop, thankfully facing the right direction. What do you think our reaction was? You think it was one of, you know, this pickup, it really should have four-wheel drive that just kicks in automatically. You know, do you think my reaction was to focus on the hole? Or was I thankful for the donut? Like, man, that could have been terrible. It could have been bad. God, thank you so much for protecting us. When something happens and we're saved from it, usually we take a moment to give thanks. And if it's something pretty serious, we also share that with others. As I was preparing for this sermon, my mom um, sent a message about, and it was just a, well, thankfully we saw that big deer before we hit it kind of thing. And it was a, they had a near miss with a big buck that would have probably totaled their vehicle. And she was so grateful and thankful that she just shared it with us. And it was a, yeah, thank goodness we almost got into a serious accident. Usually when we're saved from something, we, we tend to tell others, man, I'm so thankful for that. God was working in this. But really, is every single day any less miraculous? How many people don't get the chance to wake up? How many lives are snatched from those who think that they have many more days left ahead of them? Is any day less miraculous? Even on a bad day, if we take time to reflect on it, I think we will find reasons and cause to give thanks. So a reflection question as you enter into this Thanksgiving week is when was the last time you were so thankful you just had to tell someone else? How can we adopt that attitude every day? Or when we talk to people, we're not focused on the bad things during the day. But you know what? It, today was a stressful day. It was hard. Right? I'm not going to be Midwest nice and just say everything's fine, right? That we're good. I'm going to say that today was stressful and hard. There were still lots of good things. It's okay to admit that things are hard and bad and at the same time give thanks for the good. You can do both. 
But how much do we just focus on the negative and forget to see the blessing? And you know me, I'm not going to call it lucky, right? I don't like the word luck. <laughs> we're blessed. Us careening into a ditch and not flipping, that wasn't luck. We were blessed. Parents, how might our outlook on life and our outlook on parenting change if we take time to thank God for the gift and responsibility of the kids we've been given? And I say this after a week of Jameson throwing multiple tantrums every single day. Every single day. And wondering, God, why? This is our third one. We thought we were done with kids. This was supposed to be our child of peace. <laughs> How might our outlook on life change when, we, when our kids are on our last nerve and they know that they're on our last nerve and so they're playing it like a banjo string? What if we took time before we spoke? Just half a second to say, God, I am thankful for them. How might it change the words that come out of your mouth or the tone that you speak? So I can say kind things, but they're not in a kind tone. <laughs> God, thank you for entrusting me with this honor and this responsibility of having these children. God, help me, help me to raise them in a way so that they know you and they learn how to make you known. A two-second prayer that might change your heart, that might change what you say next. Maybe the next time you're having a fight with your spouse, what might change when you take time to give a moment of thanks? That you're in your middle of an argument and you know, I could escalate things and I want to get in that word. But we take a moment to say, you know what? I am thankful for them. How might it change your attitude? When we develop a heart of thanksgiving, our outlook on life changes. We have a different perspective on fear or excitement, on hardship or abundance, a different perspective. And when we do so, our hearts and our minds, they become focused on God and less on ourselves. And that's an idea that I want to present to you today as we look at Thanksgiving, is that as we learn to be people that are more thankful, uh, there's this idea that, if you want to click back on the slides for me, guys, so I can click to the next one. Here we go. This is the idea I want to present today as we talk about Thanksgiving. The more self-focused or self-absorbed we are, the less thankfulness we experience. The less thankfulness we experience, then the less satisfied we are in life. When we become thankful, we become more satisfied. The less thankfulness we have, the less satisfaction we will have. Now, I'm not saying happiness, right? Happiness comes and goes, but being satisfied in life. Saying that, you know what, even if I have very little even if, even if the road that I am traveling is hard right now, I can still be satisfied in the Lord and satisfied in what he's doing, not only in my life, but in the world around me. If you want to have a life that is fuller and more satisfied, then I would encourage you to become awestruck by God every single day. Every single day, be awestruck by God. There's this story in Scripture about Jesus and these, uh, these people that are lepers. They've been outcast from their society. They no longer can live in their homes or be with other people. And they come to Jesus because they've heard that he's traveling through their area. And they come to him and they say, God, would you please, or Jesus, Lord, please heal us. It's this wonderful story that we find in Luke 17. And Jesus, he says, go to the priest and as they go to be reviewed by the priest because of their illness and skin condition, the priest was the one who would let them back into their homes or not. As they were going, they found out that they had been healed. And out of the ten men, one comes back and says, thank you. One person came back to say, thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. Our hearts can oftentimes be so focused on the things we do have and maybe the things we don't quite have that we forget to take time to really give thanks and to give thanks to the one who has given it to us in the first place. I hope that my heart can be like that one person who even though everyone else, they were thankful and they were on their way and they were cheering and happy because they finally got what they had wanted for so long, one person took time to turn to God, to fall at the feet of Jesus, and to truly thank him. 
I hope my heart can become like that. The more self-focused we are, the less thankfulness we experience. The less thankfulness we experience, the less satisfied, less satisfied we are. Those are the lepers coming back to Jesus. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to click through them really fast. The less satisfied we are in life. If that's the case, then maybe the opposite is true. That the more God-focused we are, the more thankfulness we can begin to experience. And the more thankfulness we experience, the more satisfied we can become in life. My friends, I hope we grow to be a people who every day learn to truly give thanks for all that we've been blessed with. Even if everything gets taken away, as we learned from the hymn that we sang before this message, that God will never leave us. He will never forsake us. May we give thanks to God through Jesus Christ for what he has done and what he will do. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful, Lord, that we can learn uh, about thanksgiving today, about developing a spirit, a, a spirit of truly giving thanks. Father, I pray for those areas in our lives where we're, we're so worried about focusing on what we're missing that we forget to see everything we've been given. God, can we be a people? Please send your Holy Spirit to help us be a people who truly give thanks, who are awestruck every day by your greatness, who live into our calling to share the light and love of Jesus Christ. God, we're sorry for those times where we've been so focused on everything that's wrong that we have forgotten, that we've forgotten to say thank you. May our hearts and our minds be changed. May they be transformed by the renewing of our spirits that can come only through you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.